So I couldn't get Paul's original drop-in leaf ball to work. It was intermittent the way it was working. And I bought this board long, long time ago, way before Paul was building the drop-in boards for the inverters. And as of present now, when I looked on his website last, these boards have been removed from his website now because it's false economy. You wouldn't build this. For the, for the money it costs, you wouldn't do it. So that's quite a lot of money with it to buy the whole package and assemble it. I bought the board pre-built, but it was sitting in the, on a drawer for ages. Then when the drop-in board stopped working, that was my initial <clears throat> intentions was to eventually, I did get to work briefly, then that stopped working. So then I built this and then with my wisdom, I thought, because that's water cooled, why don't I try and remove the guts out of that? And maybe if I could mount the the innards of that on the chill plate of the base, which is that. As you can see, it's a um, this is a chill plate. I wouldn't use it though now because the inlet hoses are on the top, and if there's ever a leak, I don't want water running into. And also, I don't think I don't want to really go for the hassle of remounting everything from there into there. And this is where I found what the problem was. This is the the thermal paste grease. So when I went, I set about stripping the guts out of that. And that's where I've realised what the problem was. I think, I don't know if it was from the shock of the crash testing or they'd done some electrical push into the limits inverter testing. But when I ripped the circuit board off, all the IGBTs were all physically broken. They were all cracked, like all the Bakelite type surround on the, there was three IGBTs in there that were sort of weld, they were sort of on the underside of the circuit board. And I know I didn't break them getting them out, but when I took the cover off, I could see down the side of it. That's the top of it there as well. Also got drive shafts there, but we'll get to that in a minute. I ripped the circuit board off. Then I realised that the IBG, then I realised that this board has been pushed past its limits, or it was physically, but the casing's not damaged at all. So I don't know if it was from the impact or. Anyway, thankfully the motor does work. We know, we see it in my last video, this spins up the motor now. And the other stumbling block I had was, I did, bought, I did buy this complete with the Leaf gearbox. So my original intention was, let's spin around, I was going to do Tesla boys do. I went ahead, stripped out all the rear axle, rear diff, it's all on the floor there under the car, the prop. I've stripped out the whole lot, because what I wanted to do was take the motor with the gearbox, mount it at the back i even bought an, a subframe for it as well under there's a subframe there a leaf subframe was remove the drivetrain unit i was just about to rip cut all this out complete with the mountings for the original diff box and i was going to prepare to mount the gearbox and motor at the back that was my original intentions hence that's why i've got the drive shafts so i've got Leaf drive shafts. I bought some spare BMW drive shafts. I was going to get them professionally cut and spliced together. And then that would have been the drive unit assembly ready. For to use the leaf box, it's an 8 to 1 ratio box. I don't know much about the technicalities of it. But basically the original leaf motor spins at 10,000 RPMs. They're about, I'm not 100%, they're just over I think. So with the original gearbox, you need the motor to spin up to that speed to get a good high miles per hour out of it. But I've since found out that Paul's board will only spin to about 6,000 RPM and the other chap's board only, he's got put it on his website now, that it only spins to 3,000 RPM, which is no good at all. I don't know why it's taken so long to come to light. Is talking now of doing field weakening effect where they can where you can make the motor spin faster, but ultimately it still needs to get up to at least nine, eight, seven, eight, nine thousand RPM to get some kind of decent speed. Because if that spins at six thousand RPM, that's not going to reach much more above fifty miles an hour, which isn't a problem really. But I'd like to have the power. 
I'd like to have the capability to go more than that if need be. I mean, it's 70 miles per hour on a UK motorway system, so that's my first knockback there. That's when I've aborted that mission of that. So now I've got all that stripped out for no reason. I say no reason, it doesn't matter now. It's given me access to all the bushings. I mean, it's a, nearly a 50 year old car. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the bushings for the suspension there and the subframe. So I've, I've got to do that anyway now, so I will do it anyway. Back to plan B, which is mount the gearbox, mount the electric leaf motor to, that is the BMW gearbox on the table there. Now I need to couple that motor to that gearbox. Everything just seems to be hitting roadblocks with it. I'm having trouble getting somebody to, I need an adapter plate made really for that to mount to that. So apparently the Fiat Multiper, if you don't have the gearbox of the Leaf, apparently the Fiat Multiper petrol engine clutch pressure plate will go on them splines not 100% but they will do. After watching Damien Maguire's last video, I've been inspired now. He shows you on his video how he sort of did it in his garage. So I can take the pressure plate out of the gearbox, out of the engine flow there, out of the clutch system. And that will give me my spline set up for this. Now the problem I have is I need an adapter plate this is why I'd like your guys' advice if you think it's a good idea what I'm planning to do now. But also with this EM57 type motor, you've got this big overhang here. So I am prepared to cut the nosing, the pilot nosing off this shaft for the gearbox, but also as well. So that will probably go in some it's just a pilot bit sticking out really so if I cut that piece off it will make that flush with the front of the gearbox problem I've got on this one is I don't really want to slice that down to be honest on the measuring stick we've got a good 60 mil of shaft sticking out of the shaft of the motor and the other problem is with these type of motors, you've got that big overhang where the the uh, inverter once lived on top. Now, it is a quite a substantial thick um, plate that needs to be cut there, and I don't, 60 mil is quite thick to cut. I don't know with the jigsaw at home. So I had another brainwave. Tim, what you think? This is the remains of the leaf gearbox. As you can see on the bench. So my next brainwave is like this part. This part is the spline for the motor. So I thought what I'm gonna do, rather than waste money now, I'm not gonna I took the gearbox apart ultimately just to remove this part. So that's my spline for this side of the motor. So I've got a good base there now. I have no machining skills, but I can take this to somewhere now, I hope. Get this, get the bearing removed, get this piece machined down to the correct thickness, to the correct depth, and then I can get the inner part bored out, because it's, I'm, this bit can stay, this part. Get the inner part bored out, then hopefully somebody can weld the clutch plate part onto there which will give me my coupler so this is my madness starts now thinking about the thickness of that and the fact i've dismantled the gearbox anyway beyond putting back together this is my next madness idea halves of the gearbox casing that's not that heavy now i've taken all the parts out of it so this is what i'm thinking that will bolt back up onto the motor. So that's the 
motor gearbox part that bolts back to the leaf motor with the shaft sticking through. Right, this is my next mad idea. Thinking of utilizing that now. This will give me my spacing that I require and it will clear the head of that. And I think if the worst comes to the worst, I will just literally slice that part of the gearbox off if I can't utilize it. If that bit's too much sticking into the engine bay, then I'll, I'll probably just cut that off now, I think somehow so then obvious now then what this would give for me is there is a bearing on there obviously for the pilot bearing that's my shaft this is my next crazy idea that will go back in there there you go that's back in so Now I now have my adapter plate, they're mounted on there. I don't have to spend a fortune on a thick piece of aluminium now and have trouble cutting it. So now what this will give me, I hope, that's the shaft going onto the gearbox, which is on a bearing, which is quite nice, nice bonus. That can be bolted back to the motor. Now what I'm thinking is get some 15 mil aluminium plate, cut it out to suit that, cut that part off, get this part machined down to the right thickness of where it goes into the gearbox clutch spline on it. Obviously that bearing will have to be come off. So I'm thinking that this can be cut down at the correct length with the clutch plate on it and then mount my plate onto, which will marry the gearbox up to that. So it will only be literally, I could use probably a 12 or 15 mil aluminium thickness plate the only thing I was concerned about was these are probably M6 bolts that bolt the plate. There's plenty of them. So I don't know. What do you guys think? There's plenty of them. So even if I go around three quarters of the way and cut, I have to cut that part out. I've still got plenty of fixings to mount my aluminium plate. Then on the other side, I can drill through and marry up the gearbox. That's my madness at the moment. Or do you think I should just stick with the original plan and just get a big plate made? I don't want to spend a thousand pounds, to be honest, to have a plate made for that. I'm on a bit of a limited budget now. and I'll... If that idea works, I think that'll be quite good. So that's where we're at with this so far. So tell me what you think of my madness, if you think that's a good idea or not. The only thing I was concerned about is this bearing. It was obviously in oil before because obviously the gearbox was sealed and I don't want it drying out and squealing is it all right if I just pack this with grease and also you've got your limit stop on there as well and I like what Damien did he literally put a couple of tack welds on the shaft there to stop the coupler sliding up and down on the shaft and coming apart so that's my idea. What I need to do is find a machine shop that will machine that down for me, weld the coupler on there, and then I can go ahead and order some aluminium plate for that size to mount onto the face of that. Even if I have to get some new bolts and recess the heads onto the aluminium plate so it's flush. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.